Mac OS Tahoe has been recently released by Apple for beta testing and includes a brand new design. But how much does this new design impact the performance of Mac OS? We'll be finding out. Quick disclaimer, performance does not equal stability. We are testing performance, not how stable it is. So do not install it based on these results. Plus, we are testing a developer beta, not the final stable version. A lot of things in the developer beta will be sorted out by the final release. This first test is the boot up test. While this test is not as important as the others, this one tells us how optimized things are in macOS right now. macOS Tahoe has a ton of unoptimized code right now, so that makes macOS Sequoia win this test. Now our next test is a login test, and we are seeing how fast it takes to get to a usable desktop after pressing enter. Now surprisingly, macOS Tahoe won the login test, and I am genuinely shocked to see this. I, I do have a theory as to why. As a developer, I did find out that SwiftUI got a ton of major optimizations that iOS had that macOS did not get until Tahoe. And currently, Apple's trying to transition most of their code base over to SwiftUI right now. Now, RAM optimization is something we like to see here on Willy Apple, and it looks like Sequoia averages around 6.8 gigabytes on idle, and Tahoe's are averages around 6.9. So nothing too crazy here for a device with 60 gigabytes of RAM. All right, speedometer is our next test, and is our first of our browser tests. And something interesting that Apple did not mention this year at Dub Dub was that Safari was the fastest web browser with macOS Tahoe, which does honestly surprise to see. Now it may seem like nothing was new in Safari at all besides the new design, but it looks like Tahoe did take the W here, and we did end up getting some WebKit improvements according to the speedometer test. Our next test is the Jetstream test, which tests more CPU-based stuff with WebAssembly, and Tahoe did get the win here, but the results were extremely minor, and because of this, I'm calling a tie here. Now our last test is Motion Mark, and this is what really pushes both the CPU and the GPU inside the web browser. Motion Mark pushes the browser to its absolute limits and you may see lag in this video. It does multiple different things because some browsers are better than others in certain effects. But regardless, macOS Tahoe won this test by almost a thousand points. Our next suite of tests is Geekbench, and this is testing apps that are not web-based. Now we did get a major update in macOS Tahoe that websites can now utilize a GPU, but most apps these days are going to be native in macOS and not a glorified web browser. Geekbench also seems very trustworthy in these tests in terms of performance because it seems like it's always the most balanced and it tests everything a user will be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Now this is beta 1 of a developer beta, but I am in shock about these results as you probably are too. But macOS Tahoe has won both the single and the multi-core despite being a beta 1 operating system. Now next up is the GPU test, and we are starting out with the OpenCL test. Now a good chunk of apps are optimized for metal these days, but we need to test OpenCL just in case. It is deprecated, new apps should not use OpenCL, but it's good to test just in case you have an old app that has not optimized for metal quite yet. Alright, macOS Sequoia finally won a test after being demolished by Tahoe in the previous CPU test. Our next test is the metal test, and this is the framework that Apple recommends most developers to use these days. So this is a measure of performance in games and stuff like that. And it looks like macOS Sequoia also took the W here. Now Sequoia could have taken the W in both graphics tests because macOS Tahoe's new design is currently not as optimized as much as the Sequoia one, and the user interface uses the GPU rather than the CPU. Now we are going to push the CPU to its absolute limits with Cinebench. Cinebench pushes the CPU by rendering a complex scene multiple times for 10 minutes. In the 2024 version, it looks like it is a living room. Now we would do the GPU test, but Cinebench just keeps crashing on the Mac on Sequoia for whatever reason, so that is why we will be skipping it despite this Mac being fully supported with it. Now Tahoe won the multi-core test again by 50 points. My guess is that Tahoe is very CPU efficient and that the design on Sequoia used some CPU power, but now is mostly GPU dependent, which makes a lot more sense. Now our last test today is the single core Cinebench test. Most actions these days are slowly transitioning to a multi-core architecture, but simpler actions like word processing is likely going to be more single core dependent than multi core dependent. Alright, it looks like macOS Sequoia and Tahoe both tie at the exact same number of 172 points. So it looks like things are currently the exact same in terms of performance with one core being used 100%. Alright, the results are in, and it looks like macOS Tahoe, despite being a beta 1, has won most of these tests. Now this does not mean that you should be installing macOS Tahoe Beta 1 at all, 
In my experience, it's been a little bit unstable, but I'm sure as there are more betas going on, they will actively improve. And in fact, I'll be showing you what is new inside of every single Mac OS Tahoe beta, so be subscribed for that. While it does look like that Tahoe did win, Tahoe is a lot better at CPU-based tasks more than GPU-based tasks right now. So while it's not a big difference, the new design is most likely more GPU-dependent than CPU-dependent. So that is why I say hold off. I bet these scores will be improving very soon, and that when macOS Tahoe does come out to everyone, I'll be comparing macOS Ventura, Sonoma, Sequoia, and Tahoe all at the same time. So be subscribed for that. And thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and subscribe for Apple beta content as we will be going over the latest betas as soon as they come out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!